Today I wanted to talk about one of my favourite artists of the moment, SZA. How are you doing my dear ones? If you're new around here, a warm welcome. My name is Gwendolyn and you are joining us here together, the Soul Food Fano. Fano is the Toreo Māori word for family and we are the Soul Food family. You are so warmly welcome. Today I wanted to talk about one of my favourite artists of the moment, SZA. And I would like to explore with you a song that I've just sung for an upcoming episode of Singing in My Kitchen. It was one of those songs that I heard and I thought, damn, I wish I'd written this song. <laughs> it was kind of my first thought. And then the second thought was, God, I love this girl. I love her voice. I just love everything about her. You guys would have seen that I shared an interview um, of hers recently. It's kind of an old interview, but I just loved it because it just, just shared some of that process that goes into write, writing that particular song anyway. So the song itself is Kill Bill from her album SOS, right? As someone who is a trained singer-songwriter, I've kind of shared my story before, so I'm not going to go over that here and now. And if you want to know more, go check out an episode of Singing in My Kitchen after you've watched this, okay? I'll link it below for you. I think for me, it comes down to this. Authenticity is such a hugely important quality for me. And I think when artists have authenticity you can hear it in their voice somehow now, obviously different artists bring different things to the table it doesn't have to always be about that rawness the realness but there's something for me that's really powerful about that one of the reasons why i love this song is to sing it's very vocally challenging as all her songs are even it's interesting scissor herself said in that interview that i shared with you that she wasn't ever able to find the rhythm that she had when she recorded um, Supermodel. She said she couldn't ever find it again. When she sings it live, it comes out different. And I thought that was really interesting. Also really relatable as well. But fascinating, I, I'm fascinated by artists' process. I think it's just such a beautiful thing. You know? I told you guys before, right? That when I had the incredible fortune, good fortune of um, recording a record, as, as they say, you know, in, in LA, it's such an intimate process. It's such a profound process, to my mind anyway. I actually had a proposal by the end of it, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I think, I think that's it's less about me and more about the fact that it's just such a deep process. When it works, when all the stars align and you get something decent, at least, or good or incredible out of it, you know, there's some magic that's happened in that studio that we will, as listeners, we generally won't ever know about, but it's happened between those, you know, artists and musicians and technicians and everything that's allowed it to come together. So it's a really magical process. I love this song, Kill Bill, because again, as I say, it's super raw and real. I also love it because she has taken something that's very edgy. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be careful how I word this myself because of, you know, obvious reasons. Um, but she's talking about something super, super harsh, quite violent. <laughs> she does that sometimes. But she's brought it into her artistry. She's brought it into her music. And, you know, that is the key in life. If you ever have an impulse that you know is wrong <laughs> that you know could get you into serious trouble one way or another usually it's not quite as extreme as what she's singing about if ever you do journal write a song you know act it out with a chicken <laughs> you know if you're, if you're you know thinking about this song do anything but the actual thing right and i think that's the power of music when you channel it all or art or anything you know it could be painting it could be poetry channel it into your artistry that's the healthy way to do it so that you can discharge that powerful emotion and keep yourself safe and keep yourself out of trouble another reason why i love this song is because it's a good reminder for all of us really and particularly for me as a psychotherapist right as my kind of proper grown-up job <laughs> you know that women can be violent too and often when we talk when i talk me and mark often talk about you know the prevention of TV and um issues related to relationships when they go wrong when they're toxic right we've, we've kind of talked a lot about that we are often kind of defaulting to it being the male perpetrator right and to be honest unfortunately as i've said before nine times out of ten it is that way 
but it isn't always and I think this song if you read the lyrics and you know I will add a link to the song so you can go listen and read the lyrics and whatever for yourself you see how the very similar themes come through what well, when I say similar similar for me and Mark the likes of us who work with people who are on the spectrum of offending maybe not quite to the degree that Scissor is talking about in the song but certainly really kind of violent acts there's often this kind of almost victim blaming it, it's a bit like you know well she made me do it I did it because I love her it's this kind of vibe and she really nails that in this song it's, it's super dysfunctional <laughs> like you know she's saying if I can't have you no one should right and how well, you know that's such a ubiquitous kind of theme and even if it's not explicitly spoken that's the kind of motivation behind a lot of the really the, the most heinous acts that we see such a hot day here in Aotearoa today that the camera got too hot I had to come inside <laughs> Another thing I love about this song, I think mostly just the darkness of it intrigues me because it's it's a question, isn't it? And I almost started this video by asking my beloved, and I'll ask you, have you ever really wanted to do what SZA does in the song to anybody? Have you ever? <laughs> I'm not expecting you to answer that in the comments, by the way. But it's a heck of a question, isn't it? Because we've all felt anger in our lives. Fortunately, most of us won't ever have been pushed so far that we really feel like that and plan it. And, you know, I, again, I love the progression in the song where she's talking about, I might do it. And then she says at the end, you know, I've, I've, just, I've just done it, you know. <laughs> uh, I love that. I love the progression of the song. I'm looking at the lyrics here, guys. And another part of the song that I really love is where she... Um, I laughed with Mark about this as well. <laughs> she, she says, I'm so mature, I got me a therapist to tell me there's other... I don't want that, I just want you. If I can't have you, no one should. So she's saying, <laughs> she sounds so mature. <laughs> I love that sort of snark. I love that kind of snark where she's saying, you know, I'm so mature, I got me a therapist to tell me there's other men. And Mark was saying, you know, she got a rubbish therapist, you know. But actually, obviously, if that's true, hopefully none of this is true. And it's just, you know, maybe a fantasy taken to its nth degree. Who knows? Point is, um... <laughs> yeah, generally, as therapists, we don't need someone saying, I'm really in love with this guy and he doesn't love me. You know, we don't generally say, you know, there are other men out there, you know, but... I kind I love that lyric. It made me laugh when I when I realized what she was singing. Another thing that intrigues me about this song is what she's singing is that you know I would almost rather be I'd rather be in jail than be alone. I'd rather be in hell than be alone. And it really says something, doesn't it? I think that is such there's something so beautiful and powerful about that because that is something I think most of the world has experienced you know I'm I think I'm a rare beast really I'm I'm never lonely actually I think maybe partly because I spent a lot of time alone as a child even though I come from a huge family I've always been good in my own company you know and I and I love other people as well you know I, I can do both but I think there's something so powerful about the idea of and especially being alone single alone like not in a relationship I think actually a lot of people, if they really had their hands on their hearts, they could almost say the same thing. I'd rather be in hell. I'd rather do anything than sit with myself. You know, literally, I'd rather go to hell, <laughs> put myself in hell, you know, because, you know, if you're black and you do what she just did in, the, in fiction, you know, there's only one way you're going, you know, if you're African-American particularly. Although it's an extreme song in and it's obviously fantasy, it's made up, it's it's her art, it's her expression. And this is why I love, I love art like this that really, well, for me, it moved me, it made me think, it, you know, it kind of made me gasp, it made me go, oh my God, <laughs> like, you know, on some level, I guess for me, I'm really visual as well. So when I read the lyrics, I can, I can visualize the whole thing. <laughs> I think, damn girl, <laughs> you're not gonna let him get away with this, are you? Whatever this is in, in her mind, right? But I think really it's on the spectrum of human behavior. And, you know, so jealousy in terms of what we work with, attract is clearly not, not on the same level as that kind of murderous rage, right? However, it's just as painful. 
And I think going back to that point about, you know, I'd rather be in hell than alone. I'd rather be in jail than alone. There's something fascinating to me about that, you know, because retroactive jealousy is such a living hell for many people. And as I've said elsewhere, and I can't remember if I've shared this thought with you guys or not, but there can be something seductive about marinating in our own misery. So, you know, this idea of, I'd rather be in hell, I'd rather be in jail, I'd rather kind of languish in my pain, and this is now speaking more to retroactive jealousy, than, than go through the more kind of cathartic process of therapy, which is also extremely painful at times, and often transformation can be painful at first, right? Because we're kind of digging up, kind of getting to the root of something, right? Just like weeding, you know, it can be back-breaking work. Same as in your psyche. Not always roses and lollipops, right? And I think for some of us, we really should examine the extent to which we're happier in the hell of our own making, in our minds, versus the transient pain, or hell if you wish, of going through our emotions and are actually ultimately transcending those. I think a lot of people, if they were really honest, would be more more like what, you know, Scissor is singing about, would be more like, well, just put me in hell, I'll just get the quick fix of doing something heinous, <laughs> get a quick release of, well, now no one can have you, or whatever. It, you know, I mean, really, if you, if you look at these sort of archetypes or themes, it all becomes much of a muchness, right? It's all human misery, human suffering, right? And so again, you know, that's one of the things that draws me to her art, to her work. It's the same, it's the same stuff that I'm dealing with when I'm working on a deep level with one of my patients, you know? It's about processing deep emotion and hopefully through psychotherapy and hopefully she's got a better therapist than the one she's sung about, through a cathartic process, you don't actually have to act out whatever the thing is that you're you're really kind of tempted to do on some level. You can actually think it through in a very different way. And that is work, right? But yeah, I love it and I loved singing it. So I do hope that you will uh, join me <laughs> for that episode of Singing in My Kitchen is coming up. I'm not exactly sure when, but stay tuned. Make sure your notifications are on as well, especially if you like, you know, maybe one of my series or a few of them. Just keep the bell icon clicked and then you won't miss anything from me. So thank you so much for watching, my dear ones. Having a wonderful day where you are and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Kia ora.